hello everyone welcome to another video now in this video we are going to look at another medium level question and this is going to be like really simple because uh, you know you have come to a medium level question so uh, you know most of the concepts from easy level question now but uh, one thing that we need to look uh, on this question is that the brute force approach is going to be really simple um, it is no big deal uh, the, the reason why this question is in medium level question medium level difficulty is that because we need to solve we need to try to solve this in a lower time complexity right so how are we going to do that so for the explanation purpose i will still uh, do both the solutions for the brute force and the optimized one okay so let's first understand what the question is all about and then we will look into the solutions as well so right now we have question so in the question we are given a string i will i am taking the first example here okay and uh, what this string represents is let's say a kind of boxes okay so right now we have three boxes okay and we need to move uh, and this one it represents a ball okay and zero represents empty okay now we need to move all the balls to each particular index okay or each particular box in this case so um and and apart from that we need to see like how many positions the ball has to shift to move from one to from to move all the balls to one particular uh, box okay that means if i want to shift this one to the left or right it is going to take one position similarly uh, if i want to uh, push like this one to let's say the last one so it is going to be one and then two two steps right so in that way we have to return the final answer so what's going to be the final answer in this case okay so uh, if you'll see uh, apart from this we have one more uh, ball okay so to move that we are going to take only one uh, step for this also we have apart from this only one ball that is also going to be going that, that will also take one step but for this we have two balls okay this is going to take one step but this is going to take two steps okay this is like one and then from here two okay so one plus two that is three so our final result is going to be one one and three okay now um the brute force approach what is going to be is that for we will be having like a nested loop okay and we will check if uh, we are able to move that box that ball to that particular index or not okay so let's jump into the brute force it's really simple and uh, you will be able to understand just by the code itself i will not have to understand uh, like um you know I will not have to show you uh, particularly how to uh, solve that theoretically so let me just start with this final answer uh, final code of our brute force so the first thing that we require is the result right so where we are going to store the final our um, solution so for that let me create a vector so this is going to be result and I'm giving the size as well this is going to be same as boxes okay now let's do uh, create this uh, nested loops okay this is going to be boxes dot size similarly now we need to check here two conditions i should not be equals to zero the first thing and the second thing is going to be at index j it should be one okay only in that case what we'll do is result will include that particular um, value there but we need to look for the distance right how much they are far that much position that much steps they are going to take so for that i am taking absolute of i minus j why absolute because we are not sure whether i is going to be greater or j is going to be greater okay and that's it our brute force is done i'll simply return this result let me submit this <clears throat> okay so what did i did okay 
absolute at index i that is going to be plus equals to um absolute right yeah okay so that was our brute force approach but if you will see the runtime that's really really high and we are our solution is almost like um below 50 percent right and this is going to be taking uh, this will be taking like o of n square time complexity okay so let's let's optimize this how are we going to do that so the, this is one of the classic examples of two pass okay um yeah two pass okay so two pass is nothing as the name says we are going to pass through our array twice it can be like in the same direction it can be in the opposite direction okay anything so this is the classic example of two pass as i said how let's let, let me show you so as we have this string here right and we want to see like how much we have to travel okay so i'll create a variable travel and we also need to take care okay to track the number of ones we have okay so for that we'll take a variable once as well now in this particular problem what we're going to do is that in the first pass we will see how many ones we have to the left of that index okay that means so how many ones do we have before this zero how many ones do we have before this one how many have ones we have before this that is two similarly in the second pass we will take care of how many ones we have to the right of the index okay so how many ones do we have at the right of this uh, the zero zero to the right of this one again zero to the right of this one we have one okay now we have these positions but we all but we know we don't need these positions we need the distances between them we need to travel okay so that's what we are going to do that is the main thing that we need to see over here so how is that going to be so first we will find how much we are going to travel how how will we find this we will only travel when we have encountered a one okay another thing that we need to take care is that whatever we have traveled we will store that at that particular index okay but we will not simply store we will add it as well because we are going to do two pass right so we need to have the earlier result as well okay and lastly we will check like uh, we will check the number of ones we have okay so that is going to be like if we have one uh, once if once then that is going to be um we'll increment our ones counter let me rename this this is creating a confusion over here if uh, found one then we will increment our ones okay and this we are going to this is the final logic that's it this is a just a three line logic and we are going to repeat this um in the, both the passes the first pass is going to be from left to right and the second is going to be from right to left okay in the reverse order so let's jump into the coding and see how are we going to solve this so first thing that we require require the main two things that we require over here is that our two variables okay first is going to be travel next is going to be our ones okay now let's go through let's make our first pass that is going to be from box from zero till the size of the uh, string that we have okay here what we are going to check first thing how many ones do we have we will add it to travel okay next thing is that at index i we will add that i'm sorry 
we will add how much we have traveled and we will check lastly what if um boxes at index i that is equals to one then we have found one so we'll increment one okay after this we have to repeat this again okay in the reverse order so this is going to be boxes the size of our string i greater than to this zeroth index and i minus minus okay and since the logic is going to be the same let me just copy this and i will simply paste this okay but before submitting this we need to take care of two things which two things the two variables that we have declared right because if you will see here these are outside outside the for loop okay so whatever changes we do inside the for loop that are going to remain as they are okay uh, it won't happen like after the for loop the variables will be converted to zero so we need to return them to zero because we are going we are making a fresh start for, with regards to the travel and the number of ones we have encountered to the right side of that particular index okay so for that let me just do let me reinitiate this once is equals to zero okay and our code is done okay let me submit this i'm sorry okay now as you can see it has reduced like to 10 ms um we have come from what 360 ms to 10 ms okay so that's uh, that makes a very huge difference okay now the time complexity for this is going to be big o of n because technically it's big o of 2n but uh, since uh, you know while uh, while um, calculating the time complexities we always ignore the constant so this is going to be big o of n okay so i hope uh, you understood this and you like this and uh, you learned something new out of this okay and uh, yeah so that's it for this video uh, do let me know if you have any other problems for me to solve from any other platform okay do recommend me your suggestions or the problems that you are facing problem with <laughs> and uh, i will try to make uh, a detailed video on those problems okay so yeah i will see you in the next one till then keep coding